coming to you from the Deep South. This is the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast. High impact leadership is not reserved for leaders, and it has nothing to do with your position, title, or rank. However, it does have everything to do with your character. It's time to climb to the next level and beyond, personally and professionally. Now, let's start making it happen with your host, Max Story. Hello, and thank you for listening to the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast today. So today I want to share with you a lesson uh, about helping you understand different ways that you can remember people's names on purpose. If, if you're like me, that, that's a challenge. So I'm, on, I'm going to share with you. This lesson actually comes from my wife, uh, Rhea's book. Her name is Rhea. If you don't know her, her name is R-I-A story s-t-o-r-y and i'm gonna share with you uh a lesson from her book straight talk the subtitle of that book is the power of effective communication and if you don't if you don't know Rhea, and you, you need to check out her website and she's got a podcast too she mainly focuses uh, on leadership development personal growth for women but i know she has a lot of a lot of men who listen to her podcast because she still teaches principles. They apply to everyone, but she wants her, her, her audience, her focus, her target audience is, is women. But again, the principles she shares apply to everyone. And if you don't know her personal story, this book, her book on communication and connection, it, it'll mean a whole lot more to you. If you'll go to her website, Again, Rhea, R-I-A-S-T-O-R-Y dot com. Go to her website. Go up to the top where it's got the little menu buttons and pick on, uh, click on TEDx, T-E-D-X, and watch her seven-minute TED Talk. And she was uh, sexually abused by her father from age 12 to 19. And when I met her, she was 19, and that was in the year 2000. We've been together 22 years now, but it was happening to her. But I didn't know about it for a few months. But this podcast is not about that story. But if you want to see her share or hear, see, watch her, watch and listen to her share about seven minutes of her story. And she teaches a phenomenal lesson on resilience. And it's based on another book of hers, uh, Bridges Out of the Past. But but go check that out. And then you'll understand how powerful this book is. Because when I met her, she didn't know how to connect with people. She didn't know how to communicate with people. I just thought she was kind of quiet. I didn't know why. I didn't know she had been sheltered a lot of her life for for the wrong reasons. But anyway, this book is, is a great book because she had to learn to communicate. So all of her lessons that she teaches in this book, she had to learn. And so when she teaches you how to communicate and how to connect with people, it's kind of like me when I'm teaching you about transformation. I, I had to learn a lot of stuff to transform myself and and really her learning how to c- connect and communicate with people. That's part of her transformation. She wasn't an idiot like me wanting to <laughs> kill everybody in the world. Cause she had such a bad temper. I didn't ever kill anybody, by the way. I just wanted to, I was so angry about stupid stuff all the time, almost over nothing. But so she didn't have to overcome all of that. That, that was my challenge and my journey. She had to learn how to connect and communicate with people. So this book I'm telling you about, uh, if you, if you, it applies to everybody, but if if you want to learn how to move beyond communication and actually how to make a connection with people, see communication is about information. Connection is about motivation, inspiration, and transformation. Connection is about leadership. Communication is really about management just telling somebody something, giving them some information. But making a connection is about building trust and increasing your influence with other people. That's what connection is about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you, one, I'm going to teach you a lesson on one of her chapters. Th- this book is just like most of my books, and most of her books are the, are the same way as well. They're uh, 30 chapters, three pages each. This book right here that I'm talking to you about, Straight Talk, The Power of Effective Communication, it's the same way. 
So I'm going to teach you a lesson from chapter 7. And she titled this chapter, Winning the Name Game. So it's, it's eight tips to help you learn how to remember people's names. And some of them, I had learned them before she wrote the book. I had figured out how to do them. But these are things that she uses, different ways that she learns. She is phenomenal at it. I, I still struggle with it. It's, I have to say your name. I have to talk to you. I have to think about it. And hopefully you got a common name. If you if you got a name that's not common, I, I, I'm going to struggle with it. First of all, I'm probably going to struggle to say it. As all of you know, I, I struggle to just speak regular English. So when you get into these uh, fancy names, as I call them, they, they – uh, or a foreign name that, that I don't, you know, it's not common to me. It's, it's really hard and challenging for me. But both of us, Rhea and I, we both meet a lot of people. So I'm going to enhance her lesson with some of my own stories or thoughts. But I'm going to make sure I cover her lesson. But basically, I want you to know this lesson is based on a chapter from her book. Not my original content. It's her original content. But we meet a lot of people. And, and it's every week. A lot of times we meet hundreds and sometimes multiple thousands of people in a week. And we don't necessarily get to know all those people. That's too many. But we probably we probably literally meet, shake hands, sometimes more than 100 people. You know, we may speak at events where there's a couple thousand people, but we don't literally meet everybody. But we meet a whole lot of people throughout our time speaking at some at a conference or something like that. But But, you know, the greatest way... She says to quickly communicate that someone matters is to ask for and remember their name. And, and I read about this in a book called, uh, yeah, uh, what's the name of that book? I can't even think of it now. Leadership and Self-Deception. It's one of my favorite books. I don't know why I couldn't think of the name. I guess because I'm focused on this one. But Leadership and Self-Deception, Getting Out of the Box. When I read that book, it was way before Rhea had written this book. But when I read that book, the author talked about if you don't care to learn somebody's name and use their name, you just see them as an object. If you care about what their name is and you actually use their name and you remember their name, then you're treating them like a person. And, and that stuck with me. When I go to a restaurant, if, you, if you're if you at dinner with me, you're going to hear me as soon as that waiter or waitress walks up, I won't know their name. And if I don't, if I can't understand it, I'm going to ask them to spell it and, and I'm going to say it back to them. And when they come back, I'm going to say it again. And they always light up. Go to a fast food restaurant. Somebody starts, take your order. If they got an ID, a, a name badge on, call them by their name. I, they, I bet you they're going to smile at you when you say their name. If they don't have a badge on, an ID, a name tag, ask their name. Ask their name, they're going to tell it to you, and they're probably going to smile at you. Most people don't even care what their name is. So you, you don't do it to increase your influence, but I'm telling you, it's going to increase your influence. If you're doing it just to increase your influence, you're manipulating and people are going to figure that out. You do it because you actually care that you treat the person like a person and you care that you don't treat them like an object. So I want to get into these, uh, these, these eight things. And, uh, you know, you, you, you won't be, Rhea says you won't be good at remembering someone's name until you try. And she says she, she knows that, uh, a lot of people, maybe maybe you listening to this lesson, you may be thinking, I'm not very good with names, just like me. I, I know it, but I'm still intentional about it. I'm pretty good at learning a name and, and using it and keeping up with it during the conversation when I'm meeting people. But if I don't talk to you soon after that, I ain't going to remember your, your name in a, a week or a month or two months or three months unless we really talked about something or you followed up and called me later because we're meeting so many people. I, I've always I've always said I'm a slow learner, but I'm telling you, I got I ain't got but so much capacity, and I can't keep up with all the names of all the people I meet every week. But some of them do stick out, so I'm gonna tell you some of the tips she says. But uh, you know, she says in here, she says notice, uh, or let me say, she says you certainly won't be good at remembering someone's name if you tell yourself you can't, and therefore don't make any effort to do so. She says, notice you don't have any trouble remembering the names of people you meet who are important, like your new boss or someone you're excited to meet or maybe a local celebrity 
you haven't met, but when you meet them, you find out they are a celebrity. And that's true. What she just says right there. There's some people you meet and if they're important to you, you want to know their name and you know, their name you hear it once and it sticks forever. And it's, it's the reason I talked about before it's because they matter. And so, you know, they matter, but if you want to treat people like people, everybody's name should matter. So remember names, she says, especially when you meet a lot of people, it's a challenge for everyone, but here, here's some things that, that helps her remember names. And I, and again, I use a lot of them and I'll tell you that as, as I go through it, but these are the eight tips that she gives in this chapter. So number one, when you meet someone immediately repeat their name, you know, if you're somewhere at some type of an event or a, a dinner or whatever you're doing, wherever you are, you meet someone and they introduce themselves as Sue. Then, then you respond. It's very nice to meet you, Sue. I'm bad about it. I meet somebody. I start, if it's a guy, I start calling a man. I say, hey, man, uh, good to meet you, man. Or how's it going, man? I don't know why. That's just this is the way I talk. But I work hard to quit saying that and, and start using her name, ask her name. And I've been doing this for years, and I've gotten way, way better at it. But I still don't think I'm near good as I need to be and should be. But that's that's a simple principle. You can immediately repeat their name when someone introduces themselves. You know what we usually do when we shake hands with somebody? There's, we're introducing ourselves. They're introducing themselves. We're just focused on what we're going to talk about. We don't even hear their name. A lot of times you can't repeat the name because you didn't even hear it because you worried about what you're going to talk about. As soon as they shut up, give you some space. And I'm sure I'm guilty of that uh, many, many times in the past. Again, I'm getting better at it today. Sometimes I still have that same problem. I meet somebody and I'm ready to talk about some leadership and I miss the whole name part of the thing. And sometimes I'll have to ask Rhea later, what was her name? Cause she'll remember. So I don't want to have to go back and ask second with my tail between my, my legs. I don't want to go follow up and say, Hey, I forgot your name. You just told me like three minutes ago. So I still got a big challenge with this. What I'm saying though, is I get it right a lot more times now than I used to in the past. So the second tip she gives you in here, she says, associate the name to someone else you know. And that is one I do a, a lot. If I meet somebody named Bob, I'm thinking, who do I know that's named Bob? And it's for me, it's Rhea's grandfather. Her grandfather's named Bob. So as so, soon as somebody says Bob, I think about her grandfather and I associate him with this new person. I just think this guy's name's Bob and I think about Bob, her grandfather. It's real easy, easy for me to do that. So just learning that one tip helps me sometimes, right? You may need different tips at different times, but this one helps me sometimes if I know somebody or my son's name is Eric. A lot of times when I meet somebody and they say their name's Eric, I say, man, that's gotta be a good name. That's the name I, that's the name I named my boy, you know, and I'm making a deposit with them saying I like their name and it's cool and you got to be a good guy. So I'm building trust and making a deposit, but I'm also training myself by, by sharing that information. It makes it stick better in my own head. So it's, it's strange. Rhea says it's strange how the brain works, but it will help you remember their name. If as soon as you meet them, you think of someone else, you know, with that name, she says the brain will cognitively recognize something that is familiar and it will make it easier to remember their name the next time you see them. So think to yourself, somebody introduces themselves as Tiffany. Think to yourself, Tiffany, like my cousin, Tiffany, and then say their name and then use it. <laughs> Keep saying it for a little while. Don't just say it that one time and don't, and then drop it. Third tip, think of something you can associate them and their name with. So think of something you can associate with them and their name. And she says here in the book, for example, if you meet someone named Sally, think, think of Sally like Sally who sold seashells by the seashore, right? Most people know that little phrase. And I remember I, I met a, I met a guy. He might be listening to this podcast. 
I met a man named Spencer Tyson. He's a owner of a, a construction company, industrial construction company over in Savannah, Georgia. And, and when I met him in the, when we went into the room to speak, his brother was there and his, his brother's name, Mike Tyson. How easy is that one? I said something about don't punch me, man. Something like that. I made a joke, but I met him one time. I think I only talked to him that one time, <clears throat> but he's got a name and I associate it with the boxer, Mike Tyson that I'm familiar with. And I'll remember his name forever. Really, really easy. And you may be thinking, well, yeah, that's easy. Anybody could do that. Well, not if they don't know Mike Tyson, the boxer. If they don't know Mike Tyson, Tyson the boss, boxer, they ain't familiar with that name. So you got to figure out what's a name that you're familiar with. And it, it seems silly, but it, it'll connect the dots, allowing you to remember somebody's name in a way that causes it to stick. And again, you may want to get this book, Straight Talk. It's available on Amazon. It's in paperback. It's in the audio uh, form, and it's an ebook. But this is a good study book. It's full of tips to help you connect with people, right? You don't care what somebody's name is. If you're not trying to connect with somebody, you could care less what their name is. But if you're intentionally trying to connect with somebody, you want to know what their name is because it matters to you because you know it matters to them. There's there. I meet leaders. I meet leaders and I'll ask them how many people on the team. And they'll tell me sometimes 10 or 11 and they have to think about it because they don't even know. And then sometimes they don't even know their names. People don't even know the names of their team members. I, I remember reading a, one, one of my favorite books. It's your ship by captain Michael Abershoff. He said one of the first things he did when he took over that ship, he took the worst ship in the Navy in two years in his class. It was the best ship in the Navy. Again, it was a missile destroyer, I believe. So in, in the class of missile destroyer, he took it from worst to first in just two years. One of the first things he did, he got on there, he connected with the people. That man learned 310 names. He got pictures, put them with the names. He studied them. He learned 310 sailors' names. I believe it was 310s, 300-something. A lot of people don't know the names of 20 people on their team. He got on there and learned 310. He got on there with the intention of connecting. You need to become that kind of connector if you want to increase your influence in a dramatic way. The fourth tip, number four out of eight. And let me pause just for a second. My voice is going crazy. I'm going to have to get a little bit of water right here. <clears throat> Apologize for that. Maybe I recorded too many podcasts today. So tip number four on how to win the name game. Ask how they spell it. That's, that's a big one for me. I ask people how to spell it, especially if I ain't sure what they're saying or it's an odd name or a weird name. Ask how they spell it. Sometimes it's even a simple name I'll ask because it makes it stick more. Or sometimes somebody's name is Bob and they'll say, my name's Bob. And I say, you spell that with, with two Bs? And sometimes they'll look at me like they, they ain't quite sure what I'm talking about. And, and sometimes they'll be like, no. And I say, you don't have a B on the front and a B on the end? They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I spell it with two. But a lot of times they're confused, like B-O-B-B -B -B or something. I have no idea. Or I'll ask them if they say, hey, my name's Bob. I said, do you spell it backwards? Just little things like that. It's kind of silly. It's a little bit humorous. It's a little bit of way to connect. But it, it's helping me register their name is Bob because I make those little jokes when I meet people named Bob. And it helps me remember it but asking how they spell it because Rhea says here that there's almost always more than one way to spell a name. And, and that's true. Sometimes people spell their name in a way you, you didn't think they were going to spell it. But when you hear it spelled out, stop and visualize how it looks in your mind. She says, it, this really helps, especially if it's a name that's not common, just like I was saying a minute ago. And then again, she often repeats it back to them. And she says, for example, when I meet someone named Kathy, I ask if it's spelled with a C or a K. And she may reply, Kathy with a C. And I repeat it back. Nice to meet you, Kathy with a C. 
And note, she says, got a note here, says, if the person's name is very simple like Dan, it's probably not a good idea to ask them to spell their name. Right? That's pretty, that is pretty simple. They're going to think you crazy. But like she says, you know, she just said it back and she spelled it back. That's, that's a, that's a pretty powerful little simple tool. All, all of these eight tips I'm giving you, you combine them all together and you do it with intention. You're going to start getting better at remembering people's names. I know because I did it. She knows because she did it. Tip number five. Five out of eight for winning the name game. Write it down. Write down their name. It's not always possible. But in some settings, this can be very helpful. So she says, for example, if I'm getting ready to teach a class and I meet someone new, she says I might jot down, jot their name down on my notes for quick reference when I teach the class again next week. She says, by then an entire week will have passed and I'll remember the person's face, but I may not remember their name. But I will remember I wrote it down and can quickly remind myself to check if needed. Sometimes, though, when you write it down, it's like you can remember writing it down. Like you may see the person and you remember you wrote their name down, and when you remember you wrote it down, you don't have to go get it because you remember somehow you can remember what you wrote down because you actually wrote it. It, it stuck in your brain in a different kind of way. So it's it's kind of interesting how, how it works. Tip number six, ask them to tell you something unique about themselves. And she says it's just a, 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 great, a great way to break the ice if you're meeting people. If you had a party or a dinner or a, some type of social event where you're meeting people, socializing, you know, and this is real right here. She says, it's, you know, it's great to meet you, Melissa. Tell me something unique about yourself. If the person isn't sure how to answer, you can follow up with, tell me something you're passionate about or ask, what's the craziest thing you ever done? So they're, they're starting to tell you a story. So now you're having a, a story to associate with them. And again, while they're telling you the story and you interact with them, start using their name. Some of the previous tips, right? Tip number seven, associate them with somebody famous. And, and she says, you know, obviously not everyone's going to have a, a name similar to someone famous. But it's like I told you earlier when the guy told me his name was Mike Tyson. His brother was Spencer Tyson, and he said, it's my brother Mike. Mike. And I, I said, Mike Tyson. You know, I didn't really say nothing too much, but I made, I made a joke, something about, don't punch me or you ain't going to punch me or something like that. I don't know. It, it really, I started to make a joke and I was trying to cut myself off because I'm thinking everybody who knows Mike Tyson makes a joke with this guy. And so I started to do it and then I had to like kind of pull the reins back and, and not do it what I was going to do because it was just like it almost just automatically come out. So I was trying to get away from making that. But in my mind, it stuck. And like Rio says here, but when it does happen, it makes it easy to remember. And she's talking about, you know, meeting someone named Teresa. And for her, she thinks of Mother Teresa when she meets someone named Teresa. So she associates that. So the eighth tip, the eighth and final tip on how to win the name game, Rhea says, ask how they got their name. That's, that's a good question right there. Maybe they don't have a name. Maybe they don't have a name like someone famous, she says, but asking where their name originated is a good way to connect with them. You know, it's a pleasure to meet you, Miranda, Rhea says here. What caused, you, what caused your parents to choose that name for you? Is it a family name? So that's, that's another way to get somebody to talk about their name. You know, where did it come from? And Rhea says here, she says, uh, just to close out this lesson, she says, make... Make every effort to remember a person's name when you meet them. If you don't remember, it's best to acknowledge it that you don't remember, apologize, and ask again. But if you do this, you absolutely must remember it from then on. Don't make them tell you a third time. So learn these tips. But if you forget, apologize and, and ask again. One more thing about names, she says, get into the habit of introducing yourself to someone so that your name is easy to remember. 
And this is this is a key point for you to help other people learn your name. That's what she's talking about. I do it, and, and Rhea does it. So she's talking about the. She says in here in her book. She says I think the best example I know of is 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 how I actually introduce myself when I meet people. I say you know I say hey my name is Mac, like the truck but smaller. I'm a, I'm a little guy. I'm five seven, weigh about 150 pounds. So people laugh. It's a joke. Most people seem to know about the big Mack trucks. If they don't, I can mention it, you know, about a, a, a dump truck or a big rig. And, and I say, you've seen the name on the truck. And so then they know because I'm helping them visualize it. But, you know, my name's Mack, like the truck, but smaller. And she says, you know, it never fails. People remember my name because I gave them a visual Im image and a, an emotional connection to tie it to. And she says, you know, it may take you a little time to come up with something sticky about your name, but it's well worth it. If you come up with a line like that, you're going to be able to help people. Because I tell people my name's, my first name, Mac like the truck, but smaller. My last name, story like the book. And and then I say, actually, I, I've written a lot of books or something like that. I say something about the books. But Rhea's, Rhea, her name's R-I-A. And when she meets somebody, she says, my name's Rhea, like key of the car, but with an R. So that, that's, that's a bonus tip right there at the end about learning how to say your name so it sticks, a way to introduce yourself in a way that it sticks. And, and you could use some of the, the tips that I've taught you. You could figure out which one of these tips, like your name may associate with somebody famous. So when you meet somebody, like if I was Mike Tyson, I'd say, you know, some, you introduce somebody, say, I'm Mike Tyson, like like the boxer. Because they may not know how to try to remember names, so you're helping them do what you're being taught here in this lesson on this podcast. So if you like this lesson, you got a lot of value out of it. This is just one out of 30 lessons from Rhea's book, Straight Talk, The Power of Effective Communication. I highly encourage you, especially if you're in sales, if you're in customer service, but it doesn't matter. If you're a leader of people, or if you're a frontline entry level person and you want to increase your influence, this one lesson right here that I just taught you is going to increase your influence. When, I, when I, we go in restaurants, Rhea and I get ridiculous service everywhere we go because we do what this book is full of. We do it. We do it with all people we meet everywhere. And we don't do it to manipulate them. We do them to connect with them. It's, it doesn't matter if it's mechanics, any kind of service work. All, all kind of things. Guy be delivering a package. Amazon driver or UPS, they pull up at the house. They're delivering a package. I get out, ask them what their name is, say the name, talk to them. If it's hot outside, I'll usually ask them if they want a bottle of water. Most of the time they don't. They usually got water, but sometimes they, they'll take the water. It's just a way to be nice to somebody. Connect with them. And you start building a relationship with people. But I hope you got some value out of this be sure to check out Rhea's podcast just search on your f favorite podcast app uh Rhea story remember that's Rhea like Kia the car but with an r right you already got that one hopefully talk to you next time make it happen or someone else will it might as well be you are you serious about taking your career and your life to the next level and beyond Check out Mac Story's Blue Collar Leadership Series books and others now available on audio along with paperback and ebooks at Amazon, iTunes, and Audible. Please visit bluecollarleadership.com to learn about Mac's books, programs, special offers, certifications, and more. Thank you for listening to the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast.